All right, a pleasant afternoon to all those of you who are in Zoom land, I call it, joining us this afternoon for a Bible study and prayer meeting. I want to thank God for you and what a blessed afternoon it is. We certainly want to give God thanks. Tonight, we're going to begin as usual with our uh, session of prayer, our season of prayer, and we have a few people lined up to lead us in this session tonight. We're going to take our song, Sweet of Prayer, and after our song, our brother Carl Mason will lead off in our first prayer. All right, so let's, let's take that song and then our brother Carl will lead us in our first prayer, sweet hour of prayer. Let, let's sing together. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour. Amen. Just before our brother begin to pray, again, just want to remind us of the time that we need as we pray to watch the time we have. 30 minutes, so I want to give everyone a fair chance to pray. My brother, you could go ahead. All right. Um, it might not be on us yet, so I don't know if Sister Joanna is on. Sister Joanna, if you're on, you could go ahead and lead off in our prayer. Sister Joanna, you're on. Okay. Can you hear me? You mute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go right ahead. Good. Okay. Good night, everyone. Let's pray and pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you giving you thanks and prayer. As always, I come before you giving you thanks because we have so much to be thankful for. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for your amazing power mm -hmm. in working our lives. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your blessings mm -hmm. over us. Lord, I thank you for love and your care. I thank you for your sacrifice. You've given your life for us, Lord, so that we can have freedom and to choose to live for life everlasting. God, you are so good. You are so faithful and gracious. And you have blessed us beyond measure. Lord, in this time, we need to remain focused on you, Lord. And just thank you for our everyday blessings. For simple things, for the simple blessings, Lord, that we take for granted sometimes. Food on our table. For electricity, electricity for the roof of our heads. For a bed that we sleep in at night. For an able body that we can walk around and do what we want to do. Amongst, but we have family, we have friends, Lord. Simple things to be thankful for. Yes. Lord, you told us in your word that you hear our prayer. Yeah. And Lord, we come to you tonight before you, humbly seeking your face. We come together as a church body to seek you with a willing heart, ready to do your will. Lord, give us a spirit of wisdom and knowledge of you so that we may be able to stay focused on you and on your word and not be taken 
by what's going on around us today, the, the various theories and the political agendas help us more to stay focused on you so that we are not swayed to and fro in this, in this storm that is going on around us. Lord, I, I pray a specific prayer for our church family, for all who have been impacted by this pandemic. I pray for those who have lost loved ones. I pray for those who have lost their jobs. I pray for you to make a way for them, Lord. I pray for a blessing on everyone's life. life Lord, I pray for the children, especially, who are home and having to be socially distant from friends and from just being out and about, Lord. You're hearing every day of children committing suicide in this day and age, and it, it's really hard to hear these things. I pray for them, Lord. I pray for the children especially. I pray for their parents, that they can help them associate with themselves and enjoy the family time that they are being basically forced to endure in their eyes. Yeah. Lord, I lift up our frontline workers, the police, the doctors, everyone who's still out there working in, in, in and amidst this pandemic. I pray for the teachers who have to now teach our children in a different way, making sure that they still learn so that when they go back into the classroom, they are not left behind. Lord, such a hard time. Lord, I pray for our pastors and our leaders. I pray, Lord, that you keep them refreshed and give them daily a renewed spirit as they lead us, your children, your flock. I pray for Pastor Clark, Pastor Mills, Pastor Hutchinson and their families. And I ask that they continue to seek you for guidance and wisdom as they lead us, Lord, and give us guidance so that when we call upon them, that they are able and willing to do your will. Lord, more and more we are seeing that the church is not a place, it's not a physical building, but it's the people. Lord, as people, we need to come together and just show that you are our Lord and that we are a family and together we can get through whatever is coming our way as long as we stay focused on you. Yes. Lord, I pray, especially at times such as this, that we remember who we serve and who we are in you. Help us to keep our eyes on you and our hearts on you. Renew our spirits as well as we continue to teach us and bring you closer, bring us closer to you. We love you, Lord. We need you today and every day. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you honor. For you, O oh Lord, are worthy. These things I pray in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, my sister. Thank you. All right, so we're going to take Sister Natasha. You could go ahead, my sister, if you can hear me. Um, and mute yourself and just go right ahead and we can hear you, all right? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Heaven, go right heavenly, ahead. And, heavenly and eternal Father, we want to give you all the thanks, all the praise, all the honor and glory, Lord Jesus. Uh -huh. Lord Father, without you, where will we be, Lord Jesus? Thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord Father. Lord Father, in this hard time, Lord Jesus, Lord Father, I pray for all those who have lost loved ones, Lord Father, co-workers, friends. Mm. I pray that they'll find comfort in you, Lord Jesus. Continue to comfort them, Lord Father. I pray for all the sick, Lord Father. Everyone that has this pandemic, Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord Jesus, for healing on them, Lord Father. Because you are the great physician that sympathizes in Jesus. Lord Father, I pray for our children, Lord Father. Draw them nearer to you, Lord Father, in this time, Lord Jesus. Give them the strength that they need <clears throat> to make it through these difficult times, Lord Jesus. Lord Father, I pray for our church members and their family members, Lord Father. I lift them up in prayer tonight, Lord Jesus. Lord Father, I pray for our pastors, Pastor Clark, Pastor Mills, and Pastor Hutchinson and all their family members, Lord Father. I pray that you will direct them in the way that they should go, Lord Father, in the way that they should lead us, the members of their um, congregation, Lord Jesus. Lord Father, you are awesome. You are worthy to be praised, Lord Jesus. 
Lord Father, we just want to give you all the thanks tonight, Lord Father. Where would we be without you, Lord Jesus? I humbly seek you, Lord Father, that you will direct us all in the way that we should go, Lord Father. We pray for our family members, Lord Jesus, the ones that are saved and are unsaved, Lord Jesus. And this time, Lord Father, draw them nearer to you, Lord Father. Bring us all closer to you, Lord Jesus. We seek you, Lord Father. Lord Father, I pray for all our leaders, Lord Jesus. Our president, the Congress, Lord Jesus. I pray that they will make the, make the right decisions, Lord Father, in opening up these states, Lord Father, so that we all can be safe, Lord Jesus. Lord Father, I just want to give you all the thanks, all the praise, all the glory, and the honor in your sweet and precious name. Amen. 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 I'm going to call Mason. If you can hear me, you can unmute yourself, and you could go ahead and pray. He's not. All right. Sister Rosalie, you could go ahead. Sister Rosalie, if you can hear me, go right ahead and pray. Just unmute yourself. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go right ahead. Good. All right. Um, all right, Sister Patricia Brinton, you could go ahead and pray. Just unmute yourself and go right ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that although we're not able to, as to assemble together in person, that through the technology that we're able to meet as we are remotely, Lord, and we thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. But we thank you, God, for just waking us up. Many are not able to wake up from day to day. 
Many may be home, sick, many in the hospital, Lord, but we give you thanks and praise mm -hmm. for all the goodness that you have provided for us on a daily basis. So we thank you today that we have this opportunity to assemble mm -hmm. um, for a word of prayer and to learn more about your greatness, Lord. Yeah. But we try not to get too excited and get too worked up with what is going on around us, but it's the life that we are, the new life that we're living in. So we can't help but to continue to pray for this pandemic, Lord. We pray that not only this nation, but all the, all the countries of the world, Lord, that we would all be healed, that there, the infection would go away how the mysterious way that it came that we pray that it would be able to leave lord we also pray for the doctors lord that the scientists that are working on a vaccine we pray that 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 you can perform miracles that they're able to um find a remedy as soon as possible so that we can move on and get on with our lives lord and focus more upon you than the storm that we're going through at this time lord mm. lord so we think not only as we enter a new season um a little the literal season lord we know is the summer that's approaching but we also think about a season of transition for our children lord and as they are going to transition soon from remote learning that um they would have a safe summer as well lord and whatever that they do when we pray not only for our young people that they're safe this summer but for everyone as the weather gets warmer and we can't help but to assemble outside lord we pray for your safety lord that you would cover us from the microscopic virus that cannot be seen lord and shield us from any any opportunity or chance of getting infected lord and we just pray that you would just cover us in all that we do and as we move on from day to day lord mm -hmm. lord we also thank you for our leaders lord we pray that you would just continue to give every one of them wisdom we thank you for our governor of our state lord that has been leading this new york state through this pandemic and how we have come out from under and rose from above the ashes for where other states now look at us and we just thank you for his wisdom lord and we pray that the other leaders of this nation would um, fall into line and they would guide us accordingly lord and we also thank you for our church lord and we ask that you continue to um, bless all the leaders of our church we pray in particular for our pastor and his eyes, Lord, that you would um, would heal him, Lord, and help him that he would not have to endure any further surgeries and that he would just be able to continue in life and not have to deal with any more um, problems with his eyes. And we ask that you would just continue to guide him and lead him in all that you have planned for him to do for our church lord and we thank you for all that he has done and to just continue to encourage him and we lift him up lord and we thank you for all that he continues to do we pray also for his wife and his family lord that they just continue to be as faithful and we thank you for all that they have continued to do in our in the church lives lord we also lift up pastor anthony and his family lord that you continue to be with them and to guide them lord and to to grant them health that past anthony is always out in the fields lord and we just pray that you would cover him lord with wherever he is and whatever he wherever he goes lord we thank you for him and for his family we also lift up uh pastor chris and his family lord that you would um would be with them as well lord Lord, we, we thank you for, Lord, Lord, Lord we, we thank you for our, our, our church. We lift up all the sick to you, Lord, and we just pray that you would um, 
would heal them wherever they are, Lord. And we, we thank you, God, for all that you continue to do in our lives. And we look forward to the day, Lord, that we are able to assemble back in our services in person and um, look forward to that day. And we lift all these things up in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. That before, before he comes, I'm going to take just a Sheridan is going to lead us in prayer now. Then after Sheridan, we'll take Bella call. Father God, we pray that we will have a good service, that it will be blessing. We pray that everybody will stay safe and they will do social distancing. We pray for the COVID-19 patients, that they'll be able to get better and they won't get sick again. And we pray for the families who have lost loved ones as they grieve. We also pray, we also pray that the COVID-19 will disappear. And we pray for my father's eyes that they will get better. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you. Um, Brother Mason, ready? Yes, Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go right ahead, my brother. Okay. Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to meet where we can still be fed by your words. We thank you for your blessings. Father, we pray for all the pastors. Dr. Clark, we ask, Lord, that you just guide him, Lord, as you've continued to bless him. Lord, we pray for Brother Mill, Pastor Mills and Pastor Hutchinson. We pray, Lord, that you would guide them and their families. Father, we give thanks for all our pastors. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to guide them, to provide for them, Lord. And Lord, especially at this time where we are faced with this situation, we pray for all our members that they'll be safe. We pray for the health professionals, nurses, doctors, and all who work in the hospitals and other places where they're exposed to this danger. Lord, we're just going to give you thanks and continue to pray that you'll guide us and provide for us. Father, we pray for our ministers. We pray for the leadership of the country. We ask for wisdom for our leaders. Father, we just want to give you thanks and continue to guide and bless our members, especially those who are ill and those who are recovering from their illnesses. Father, we thank you, Lord, for life. We thank you. We give thanks and praise and bless your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord. In the name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Um, we we have a little time. I don't know if anyone else wants to wants to jump in and. Um, and pray. Um, how would they be able to do this? Just unmute. Yeah, anyone wants to unmute, you could just go ahead and just pray. Don't belong. And we have a few minutes, so we can take at least two people. Um, anyone? Just go right ahead. Go right ahead. Who is that? Look, pick that. Pick up this tool. All right. Somebody who wants to pray, go right ahead. Somebody mic is open. Anybody wants to go ahead and pray? We can take two more prayers. Anybody? Any believer that's online? Yeah, you could raise your hand. Or right, you want to go ahead and lead us in one? Hello. Brother right Noel, you're going to pray? Yes, sir. Go ahead, quickly. All right, so Heavenly Father, we come to you again in the name of Jesus Christ, with that name you give us it, um, where we can pray, oh God. If there's anything we ask in your name, you will hear us, and we thank you for hearing us whenever we pray. Lord God, we thank you, oh God, for your word. Studying your word every day, Lord God, it's it's such a blessing, even in a time like this, Lord God. We have your word where we can lean on, oh God, and feast on. We thank you again, Lord God, for the church valley stream. 
We thank you for the pastor. We thank you for the deacons. And we thank you for all the faithful members, Lord God. Lord, you see this time so much prior go up for this pandemic. But Lord God, you know everything. Yeah. And we just have to rely on you. Oh God, rely on you. We, we don't have to rely on man because man don't know anything. Only you, my God. So we thank you. Lord God, as we listen to your word tonight and study your word, Lord God, we pray that you may open up our understanding more, oh God, so we can have clarity with your word. We thank you for the man of God who is here, Pastor Clark, who, who is so wise with your word and can share it, Lord God, so we can hide your word in our hearts so we, cannot, so we don't sin against you. We thank you for everything. We thank you for his family for his children, his wife. We thank you for the rest of the pastors, Lord God. And we thank you for everything. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen. Any, any, any other person? Just one more. Sister Lorna. Huh? Sister Lorna. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Our Father and God, as we come to you tonight, Father God, we want to thank you for today and we want to thank you for tonight. We want to thank you for your love towards us, for your goodness, for your keeping cares and your tender mercies, Father God. Father God, we thank you for even this moment that we are about to start our Bible study. Father God, I lift up our pastor before you tonight, God. Pastor Clark, that you continue to hold him in the hollow palm of your hand. And that you continue, Lord Jesus, to teach him, Father God, so that he in turn can come and share with us, Lord God, what you have taught him. To open our eyes and our knowledge, Father God, that we can be more mature to your words. Father God, we lift up those that are sick and afflicted before you tonight, God, that if it is your will, you will heal them, God. We thank you for those that you have healed from this virus, Father God, and even those that did not have the virus, God, but was, were sick and you have healed them too, God. We thank you for your goodness towards us, Father God. We thank you for your grace and your mercies. We thank you for protecting us, for keeping us, even our families, our loved ones, God. Mm -hmm. Father God, we continue to depend on you and lay ourselves placid in your hands. Because God, in you we lived, in you we moved, and in you we have our being. Have your own way in our lives, Father God, as we continue to trust you. As we tell the times, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Awesome. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Next week, we'll, we'll just do it like we'll just change the forum and then we'll just have an open mic and allow any. Anyone who wants to pray, pray um, next coming Wednesday. We thank God for you and thank you again, all those of you who participated um, in our prayer meeting. We're going, to, we're going to take a song and then after the song we get into the word. sanctuary and what that is actually speaking of is God taking dwelling place in me and in you that's what the sanctuary this building is not the sanctuary
Bible said in Corinthians that what knowing not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and that he dwells in you. That is the sanctuary and the message that the songwriter is, I hope, is indeed trying to convey to us. Again, welcome to our Bible study. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, those of you who were with us from our prayer meeting segment, we just want to praise God and thank God for you. We are actually on page 15 in the material, and that's where we are going to go. Remember, if you have a question, if you have a question, don't feel bad to interrupt because I cannot see you, um, so I don't know if you have a question. Uh, my wife is at the control, see which you let me know. But um, if you have a question, please don't be afraid to interrupt. Um, how will they do it? Will, should they raise their hand? Should they unmute? What? Can you, can you use the mic so that we can, um, can hear you? And, yeah. I don't, we're gonna have a lot of people try ask a question all at once. I mean, it's, it's a free, free forum. Um, it's, they can unmute themselves and, and ask if, or if they rather type it in or if they want to raise okay. their hand and have me unmute them if they're not sure how to unmute themselves. Either way, I mean, for tonight, it, it's pretty much flexible. All right, very good, okay. All right, so let, let's begin if no one has any questions or anything and we'll move right along in the material, very interesting. Uh, material in front of us and we are going to go right there. Parallel to what we're studying in our Sunday school is amazing and that's, that's how scriptures are to be um, synchronized. That's how we are to come together and that's how we are to come to understand scripture because truth indeed is consistent and the last time we're looking at Jesus appearing to these two men and Emmaus Road, and what we're looking at, as we did on Sunday, is we're looking at truth in relation to the person and work of Jesus Christ, who Jesus is. And just imagine, Jesus had just spent um, a good period of time with these men, but he died and was buried, and on their way, um, this is the day after, Jesus' crucifixion, they began discussing and they were talking to them among themselves as to whether or not Jesus would come back as promised. And Jesus appeared unto them and no doubt engaged these men a little bit into conversation. And having spoken with them for a while, Jesus realized that even though he spent three years with them, they really never fully understood much about him. And the same thing can be said today. There are so many people who have spent years in church or in ministry or in pastorate and still not understanding scripture the way God certainly wants us to understand scripture. And if you go back to math, to Luke, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 24, well, back on page 14, you'll realize that um, when Jesus walked a little bit with them, they came to an intersection uh, where they were going to be branching off. They were, I guess they were home. And Jesus pretended as if he was going to just walk away. And they begged Jesus to stay with them for lunch. And Jesus did. And the moment Jesus did that, things change. Let's get over to the material and pick it up from where we left off because this, this is so interesting. Last week when we, we, we got to this point, I was just amazed as we look at scripture and as we look at the word of God and we saw the interaction between these men and Christ and the outcome of it. And so let's begin at the top where it says Moses wrote the first five books of, of the Bible, Genesis through Deuteronomy. Um, it is in these books, particularly the book of Genesis, that the very foundation of all scripture is formed. Very foundation, which is, if, if one, if, if you miss, listen to Pastor Sherby one moment, if you misunderstand in the book of Genesis, then most likely, you will not fully understand the rest of scripture. 
it, it is so important to come into a clear understanding of scripture. And in order to do that, you've got to get back to the foundation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something that Jesus did tonight that was so amazing with these men. But let's, let's finish this little paragraph here. So to, to, to Moses wrote the five books of the Bible. It, it, is, it is these books that um, laid the foundation for us to fully understand. Creation, ruin creation, two creations. Physical universe and man. Physical uni universe, God brought about a restoration to it. And God is still working and bringing man to full restoration. He's not there yet. Our man has not fully complied with God as yet, but it's getting there. All right. According to uh, the previous passage, that's what we looked at in Luke chapter 24. Um, we realized that Christ brought them to a certain place and point in, in, in his discussion with them. And they were held spellbound in terms of their discussion because most likely they were amazed at this person. And so the, the events of that day continued. That is the event in relation to Christ catching up with them and having that discussion. The two men arriving at their destination and still not recognizing Jesus. The two men who had just been with Christ the day before, arriving at their destination and still not recognizing Jesus. And, and, and look at what is going on in the world today. Um, most times we're keeping church and Christ, some of the times or most of the times or 95% of the time, is nowhere to be found in it. Because it's usually uh, not about him. It's usually all about us. And it's usually all about man. I was just thinking today that um, when, you, when you go today and you have a conversation with another minister or even a leader from another church and you, 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 know, you introduce yourself and you tell them what church you're from, their questions are always around how many members do you have in your, in your church or how large is your choir? And those are the things that we're concerned about. Now, these two men... Jesus was with them for three years. And Jesus had just left. For, he was just, um, well, just crucified the day before. And he was now walking with them. And their spiritual eyes, their spiritual eyes were still not fully open in terms of understanding scripture. See that? And Jesus was with them, still not recognizing him. Ask him to stay longer with them. So they never recognized who he was and they asked him to stay a little bit longer with them. And, and he complied. Then, as they sat down to eat, he just complied. And as they sat down to eat, something is going to break through. Look with me at Luke 24 and verse 30. And that is in the material, page 15. I'm going to read it for you. He says, and it, came, and it came about that when he had reclined, relaxed, sat down at the table with them, he took bread and blessed it. And remember that he did this just before he died. He took bread. He broke bread. That is how the communion started. And he said, this in the New Testament symbolizes my body. As often as you eat this bread, you will show my dying till I return. Then he went over to the cup, took the cup, supped from the cup, and said, This cup symbolizes my blood. As often as you drink from this cup, you will show my dying till I return. But now the emphasis is on the bread. Remember when Jesus fed the 5,000 people with the food or the lunch that a little lad brought? Go back to verse 6 in John, and remember, right in that chapter, Jesus told them exactly why he was performing that miracle, feeding so many people with so little. He said, because Passover was near. Why, why the Passover? Why is it tied into this? Well, the bread in the Passover speaks of him 
as the bread of life. The bread at this point in time is the very same thing. The bread of life. The bread, the living word, and Christ also is the written word. And when we feed on this bread, he's not just talking about a loaf of bread. He's talking about him, his word, his bread for us to feed on. And we'll get there. But he blessed it and breaking it, he began giving it to them. Just like how he gave it to them before, this is the same thing that he's doing again. Can I say I'm, something? Huh? Can I say something here? Go ahead, Sister Moore. Um, so is this is the first time in scripture I am thinking mm -hmm. that the, the living word, Jesus Christ, was actually walking and explaining the written word. So oh, yes. So um, I'm thinking that if the living word, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. was himself explaining the written word um, to these disciples and they still their spiritual eyes, mm -hmm. mind, um, it must have been for a purpose. Was, could it be? Um, for him to continue the journey with them and to break the bread, which, as you just said, is the bread of life. No, they, I mean, they, Sister Moore, they never understood Moses. And he's going, Jesus knew that. And that's what we're coming to. Because just like today, think, go back to John chapter 3 in memory and look at the conversation Jesus had with Nicodemus. When Nicodemus appeared to him and, and, and the whole conversation came about, about the new birth, being born from above, are born again. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, Are thou a ruler of the Jews and know it not these things? He never knew, never understood, never paid attention. And it is the same thing with these men. They just never paid attention. By the way, throughout the Pauline epistles, you note that each, almost every one of the epistles, Paul had to go back and, and explain to the Jews who Jesus was and what Jesus did. Throughout the epistle, he kept doing that. Why so? Because as they came into faith, they, they, they had zero knowledge or zero understanding as to who Jesus is. The same thing. Okay. All right. Now, I wanted to read for you, Sister Amor, as you mentioned that in John, St. John 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the, wor and, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And um, it says, um, verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Pastor? Can Sister you me, Pastor? Did Sister Barbara, go ahead with your question. Yeah. Could it also have been the fact that through, right up to the very end, the, 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 uh, the apostles doubted. They were not sure. They didn't have full and complete faith that Jesus was who he said he was and the least little thing that happened in Jesus's walk with them could shake their belief he had to continually convince them in word and deed in signs and wonders even giving them the power to do miracles still at the end they doubted yeah, but as, let's go to the text a little bit here in Luke 24, 30. And to, the, to that point, Sister Barbara, um, because in Luke here, as, as soon as Jesus um, broke bread, their eyes were what? Open, and they recognized him. What eyes is this? The eyes of knowledge. 
not just their physical eyes, but their eyes of knowledge. They began to realize who Jesus was. And you're right. Um, they doubted Jesus. Some of them followed. Look at Peter. When Peter got to that point of the crucifixion and somebody recognized him, he started denying that he knew Christ for, for many reasons. But, but here, they recognized who Jesus was and what Jesus did next. And then Jesus actually vanished out of their sight. But listen to verse 32 for one moment. Listen to verse 32. And they said to one another, this is a direct quotation, were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road? While he was explaining the scriptures to us? These are the men speaking now. Jesus disappeared. He, he left. And they're, they're, they're looking back at the conversation they had. And what is this talking about? Well, that's exactly the way scripture ought to affect us. The Bible says it is a two-edged sword. It, it, it cuts going and cuts coming. And it's not necessarily talking about dealing with anything bad here. Just talking about bringing a separation between that which is darkness and that which is light. And we know that the word of God is actually light. It brings light to us. And they, they had an, an inner burning, an inner conviction, an inner separation from their ignorance, the truth. And so they, they, they right away, they realized that he actually came back from the dead. It's amazing. It's amazing. And you're, you're, you're so right because these disciples who followed him, some of them over time, um, understood and knew exactly who Jesus was and, and some of them progressively came into an understanding of who Christ really was. All right, so they had an inner burning here. The word of God brought about a separation. And I just want to say that that's what truth does in us. Truth is never something that is easily accepted by anybody. Never. It, it is sometimes it cuts real deep when we get into what we call truth in relation to scripture. And that's what most people don't want to give up in today's world. They don't want to give up certain things that they hold on to. And if, if, if truth is brought their way, and most likely some will make that decision just to remain in the condition that they're in. And, 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 and the, the disciples, were brought to this place and point before Jesus Christ, where Jesus brought them back. In fact, if you, if, I think if we go back a little bit, we will see where Jesus at one point in time looked at them and thought they were very foolish or called them fools in the context. Why? Because Jesus said, if you knew Moses, if you could get back to the Old Testament and fully understand what the Old Testament is all about, you would have known about me. And that was the problem with those people who followed him. They read it, they knew it. They had the head knowledge of it, but the application of that truth, they just could not apply. And you know, look, pause one moment, just pause one moment and think about religion today. And look how complicated to many religion is. And look at the different belief system that are out there. And even in a single congregation where people are together as a body, locally speaking, not, not, not generalizing the body of Christ now, but as a body like the Valley Stream Baptist Church body, our members. And yet, there are just so many different philosophy or can be different philosophy regarding any given biblical subject. But in order for us to, to synchronize our faith, we have to get together, study God's word and understand God's word. We get back to Genesis, begin to look at the foundational aspect of it. And you'd be surprised to know the things that people argue over today that they don't have any meaning. They don't really help us in terms of bring about any edification for us. 
But yet people argue over these things. But Jesus wanted them to get back to Moses. And that's why, that's the way the scripture is structured for us to look at. Let's, let's just dig deeper here a little bit. Anyone with thought you meant? Hello? Yes, Brother Noel. Yes, um, this thought come to me because, you know, I'm going through the book of um, Deuteronomy and that part of the book. And we see where Jesus said, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you don't have any life in, in you. Mm -hmm. And when we look back, that's, uh, this is what I think Jesus went back to Moses and show when the, the priests had to eat the, the lamb, when, when they sacrificed the lamb, the priests had to eat the flesh of the lamb mm -hmm. and then take the blood to the, to the uh, most holy place. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus was saying, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood, that's what he was referring to. Well, it, it wasn't, he, remember now, Jesus wasn't talking about in a literal way because there, there, there is a religious group today that believe that when you take the wine and the bread, it, it, it is literally the body of Christ and the blood of Christ that you're actually taking. And so people have lifted a doctrine out of that. But that is actually not talking about the literal blood of Christ and the literal body. It's symbolic. It's a symbol. The, bar, the, the, the bread represents what? Yeah, yes, I know, know that the, the, the bread represents his body uh -huh. and also the blood is, uh, is for sin. A cleansing. Uh -huh. A cleansing for sin. But it's all by faith. It's, it's not literally that you're going to eat his flesh or drink his blood, but it's by faith. Right. So when you exercise your faith in Jesus Christ, that's, and especially when you're reading his word, you are feasting on his body because he's the living word and the written word, so we are feasting on his body. So when Jesus said, without you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life. Without you feast on his word, feast on his body, you have no life. Right, and, 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 and accumulating knowledge in relation to him. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, the disciples, remember he had um, 70 other disciples who walked away when he said that because they didn't understand what he was talking about. And see, right now, he said, without you understanding Moses and his writing and the prophet, they will never understand him. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think he took them back all the way from Moses to the present time when he gave his life and rise again and was walking with them. But mm -hmm. well, you, really you, you, you know, what's so interesting, Brother Noel, is that when you look at scripture today and how scripture is utilized, um, we don't really spend a lot of time on the, in the Old Testament. Um, it just appear as if the church is all about what we call the New Testament from Matthew to Revelation. Some will stop even before Revelation. But that's, it, seem, it appears as if that's, that's the structure of what we call the New Testament church. Not realizing that the entire Bible is for us. It's for us. I mean, not for us to practice everything that's in there. Um, because there are so, some things that, that went on in there that weren't good. Um, some bad things happened in there and God placed those things there for our example. And also there are good things in, you know, entire Bible is good, but some of the, those good things in the Old Testament, basically not for us as a church to practice, but then again, it's for our examples to look at. They are for our example. We look at them and we follow the instructions that we're given as, as Christians and we cannot fully understand the New Testament if we do not understand the Old Testament, period. So as you just mentioned, regarding the blood of Christ and God structured things like that with a pattern a type for us to follow and then over time came to Christ the antitype and Jesus shed his blood on Calvary's cross as a perpetuation for man's sin 
and basically that's it that's it but but noel there is a group of people today who believe that once you take the communion and you participate um, with the wine and the bread you're literally um, participating in the body of christ physical body in one sense all right anybody else or we move on here man look at the time all right good good this is the way it ought to be now um there's a question here at what moment did they recognize who jesus was the moment he took bread and broke it i gave thanks that's the time when they recognize who jesus is all right in considering what jesus did um our, in consider what Jesus had just taught them in verse 27 um, why do you think they recognize him at that moment why do you think anyone wants to jump on that and answer that question anybody because their eyes were open because their eyes were open all right very good or right, anybody else All right, good, because their eyes are open. All right, drawing from the whole story um, and seeing the scriptures, the way Jesus taught them, what effect did it have on them? Verse 32, what effect did this have on them? The Bible said it did what in verse 32? It mentioned Nobody? Hearts to burn, and burn within them. Hearts to burn. Hearts to burn. Hearts to burn. Hearts to burn. Within them. All right. Good. All right. All right. Who's online? Oh, Sister Shirley, you want to say something? Yeah, I think Brother Noel said it. That their spirits were lifted as they said, "Our hearts burning within us," while he was speaking. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. Okay. And the previous and the previous question, um, in considering what Jesus had just taught them, um, he explained to them about Moses and the prophets and the things concerning himself uh -huh. in the scriptures. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because Sister Shirley, the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is about Jesus Christ. Yes, Pastor. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of people don't realize that. So they always just jump to the New Testament and think and think the New Testament just mentioned in Matthew are the Gospels. That's all we need to read. And then the epistles. They just think that the, 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 the Gospels just are the only books in the Bible that mention Jesus Christ. But you go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then John chapter 1 verse 1 tells you... Um, about creation and about Jesus's work in relation to that. All right, that's it, Sister Shirley. All right, her mic is closed. All right. Yes, that's it. Thank you. All right. Very good. Very good. So as once Jesus, once Jesus broke bread with them, and I'm at the bottom of the uh, the page fifteen, almost the second to last paragraph. Once Jesus broke bread with them. They recognized who he was. And then he disappeared from their sight. Somebody? Okay, all right. Um, the two had come to realize uh, the key to understanding Old Testament truths that the whole of the Old Testament is about all the various facets of the person and work of Jesus Christ. All right. And so um, uh, I have to read a little bit slower than this because that's in my eyes. For one moment, I got to just take my glasses off from it. Yeah. So the fact of the matter is that as soon as they, Jesus broke bread, they understood. But in order for them to fully understand what Jesus was talking about, as Jesus told them, they had to go back and, and, and get a good look at the entire Old Testament 
um, because Jesus is mentioned not only in portions of it, but all of it. All of it. All right. After coming into, into this understanding, it was easy for these two disciples to realize at once that the one breaking the bread was himself the bread of life. As Sister Moore mentioned earlier, that this bread of life was the one who walked with them, talked with them, performed miracles in their midst and for them. And yet, um, they never recognized who Jesus was. And it's, it's possible, just like in, in the book of Revelation, that Jesus was outside knocking and he was saying to the congregation that was already inside having service, no doubt engage in worship, mentioning that they were worshiping Jesus Christ. And he was outside knocking and he said, is there anyone in there? If anyone will let me in, never said, you know, well, he knew that it might not be a lot of people would recognize him or want to let him in particularly. But he said, if anyone lets me in, I will come in and sup with you. And I think in today's world, especially in religious world, in our churches, not many people let Jesus in, you know. Because they know that when he comes in, things are going to be different. Christ will change things. Now, he's not going to change things unless you allow him to. He's not going to force you to do anything. But it's man's duty, it's man's responsibility. Let him in. Somebody? A, a comment that, um, but even Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 3 uh, says that we will come into a, a mature knowledge of God's word or a mature knowledge of the kingdom if God permits. So if, if, if God sees that we're not serious about um, surrendering or giving up certain things or pursuing him, then the Bible said, you know, he has the authority to permit based on, on what, how he sees us responding to the word. You know what's funny? I, I was just thinking of saying something, but I wanted us to wait till I get a certain point. But as you mentioned that, I'll do it. Most people don't understand what spiritual growth is and how when, when spiritual growth, growth starts in a person's life. There are so many people who are thinking that if you get actively involved in church ministry and get real busy, it's a sign of growth. Or, or you become so dedicated to what you're doing. But that has nothing to do with spiritual growth. Because spiritual growth is actually knowledge coming in and affecting you in a certain manner. Because its edification is building you up. Notice what growth is centered around in the passage you just mentioned in Hebrews chapter 6. And, and there are a list of things in chapter 5, coming to the end of chapter 5, that the writer mentioned that you have to move away from. You have to move away from milk. So spiritual growth really don't, there's no connection with activities at all. It's spiritual growth. Activities is, it should be a, as a result of you growing. You understand? And, and, and I, I came to Valley Stream 14 years now. And when I came the first couple of weeks, I said, let's not do anything, let's not make any plans unless we understand what scripture said about it first. Because if you, and, and when you come to maturity, that's what you will do. You, you're not going to plan and then you look at scripture. You're going to look at scripture and then you plan. Why so? Because that's what growth is all about. Knowledge comes in. And knowledge is the guiding force in a Christian's life. Knowledge is the compass. It guides you exactly where God wants you to be and where God wants you. If we ever stop and just follow scripture, things will be much simpler for a lot of congregation, a lot of churches. Yeah, and, 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 and look, at, look at where we are now. Just imagine, most churches, most congregations are not meeting as a group collectively today. Can you imagine those who have not had a solid foundation and those who have not been taught to be faithful to the Lord, 
What are they doing at this point in time? How are they being fed? Because if you are not used to being fed properly, what are you being fed with now? And so that's, that's, that's so important. Somebody has a... I'm going to say that if you're accustomed or if you're drawn to a ministry because of the extracurricular activities, then you are going to be in, in big trouble right now because none of that is being offered at this point in time. And, and you know what? And precisely, none of those things are being offered now. So if you never had a foundation before, what do you have now? Nothing. You have absolutely nothing to go on. So if you were just depending. So the disciples needed to fully understand and then needed to understand what the Old Testament, what Moses had to say in his writings, the prophets and even the Psalms regarding Jesus Christ. Knowledge about Jesus Christ. That's where growth begins. We, so we just need to pause. We just need to stop for a moment. and take. Churches need to slow down. We really need to slow down. And when I say slow down, I mean all the way down to a stop and begin to look at things a little bit differently. And so um, the two men had come to realize that the key to understanding the Old Testament truth, uh, that the whole Bible, Old and New Testament, must be looked at from, from this facet of, of the person and work of Jesus Christ from Genesis to Revelation after coming into an understanding it was easy for these two disciples to realize at once that the one breaking the bread as I mentioned before is actually uh, the bread of life whose body had just been broken three days prayer Jesus died three days before and now he rose from the dead. And many of us in today's world, in the religious world today, cannot recognize the distinction between that which is false and that which is true. Because we really don't take time. There are some little things, you know. I wonder if I could just take a moment here. You know, there are some little things from, from a traditional perspective that we from time to time hold on to and, and practice, even the language of scripture. You know, once, once a believer gets to a certain level of maturity, the believer's language ought to change, you know, the way we look at things, the things we say about certain things, and, 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 and the way we talk regarding the whole counsel of God um, ought to change. Why? Even the songs we sing. Why? Because we come into an understanding of scripture. That's growth. Growth you move away from, unto, from, unto, from, unto. Just like repentance, same thing. You turn from, you turn to. So as we grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So that's why we have to pause. So when we speak, we, we, we must speak our conviction based on scripture. Our conviction, based on scripture, take time to come into, listen, I, we, we, we like good worship service. Oh my God, I love to go to a church that has a good, vibrant worship service where you lift up the name of Jesus, you praise the almighty God. I believe those things are so important for us. It's our time to express ourselves in, in praise and thanksgiving to God. But, but with all of that, the groundwork must be laid so that we don't get off track. The groundwork must be laid. And that was what Jesus was dealing with, with these men. Truth. Truth. Immediately, they recognized him. Immediately. And the essence of this lesson itself had a result um, in their hearts concerning scripture. Ah, uh, it caused their hearts to burn within them. Thank you. It's, it caused their heart to burn within them. Man, I, I mentioned a while ago that I remember years ago, I sat on the, an expository message by a brother who has passed on a while. And it was such an amazing experience. Sat there and listened to a man 
without any form of distractions, just expounded on the word in a contextual manner. And, and, and when he was finished, we, I, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but I, I was filled with knowledge and understanding. And anytime the church meets, you know, anytime we meet, no matter what, that's the way it ought to be. And that's why we are to meet as a body. Not, not, not the hand over there and the feet over there and the lip over there and the eyes over there. That's what Satan likes. He likes to, to bring division among us. But we are to meet together and we are to be fed together so that together we can grow and build strength. And we are not to get carried away with what other people do. Let's do what is right. Listen, you know what I think I'm so glad that God has given us an opportunity. And that's why I, I'm, I'm making sure that my kids lead the way. It's my responsibility. God said, if I can manage my home, then I can't manage a church. And that's why I make sure that my kids are part, they're baptized there and they're Christians and they ought to show signs of growth. It's important that they show signs of growth. That's the body. The foundation has to be laid. So it's my responsibility to teach them from Genesis to Revelation. And if we, if we can teach our children the way we are taught in Scripture, in truth, this will have a significant impact on the world. Go ahead. You got something? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's important. The church is one body. Over the years, we've, we've dissected the church for our own reason. Look at what is happening in the world now. How do, how do we survive? If we were just depending on different ministries and all kinds of different ministries. Thank God at Valley Stream. Thank God. God opened our eyes. And we, were, we, we, we already began looking at things. And, and some of these things are painful enough because people look at you and think you're crazy. But that's, the, that's the way God designed it. So here, it, it worked out for them because the word of God brought about a burning. A sensation within them. We must learn this lesson well. We must. We must not make their mistakes. Folks, let us not make their mistakes. Let us not be this ignorant. So, sometimes, you know, I've, I've always said, and, and when I said it, a person said, Pastor, really? We, I believe we can come together as a congregation and we can study the word of God and we can sing. The priority is on the word. The priority is on the word. And by the way, I need to say something else. Consistency on our part is important. To be consistent, not just sometime, not just when certain things go right. Listen, all when things, all when all hell break loose in my life or your life, God is requiring us to be faithful. To be faithful. And that's what the church needs, you know. Faithfulness, committed people, people who are committed and who are faithful and will stand on the word of God and, and we will be there. And by the way, let me just say this. I know when churches open back, there's going to be a flood of people going, but God is not a fool, you know. God knows that's the way people operate. A disaster comes in and then everybody just, just, just get in the fever and, and, and as soon as things dies down and everybody goes back to where they belong. No. Be faithful in season and out of season, regardless of what is going on. And there's a little song that said, I shall not be moved. Don't be moved. Be faithful. And these disciples, if they were paying attention, see, they were probably paying more attention to their Jewish custom. Nicodemus knew more about his Jewish custom than what he should have known about the scriptures. Jesus said, Aren't you a ruler of the Jews? Brother, you should have known these things. They're there. You guys were baptized in the wilderness. By the clouds, or under the clouds, and in the water. Yes. Didn't you understand what that meant? Didn't I let you guys out of Egypt? Didn't you put the blood on the, on the door lintel before you go? It was redemption for you. You've been born from above then. And so this birth that is coming is again. And that's what Jesus was trying to explain to him. And there are many Christians today who we don't get to study the Bible where we want to, or we should, or we ought to. And because of that, there's just so much confusion. 
So we must learn this lesson well. For it is only in understanding scripture the way Jesus taught that we will what? Understand correctly. Exactly. That's the only way we're going to understand correctly. You can't rush it. You can't get too excited. You have to take time to study the word of God. You've got to take time to understand it. You come to a passage and there's a little difficulty. Spend some time in prayer. Get back to it. I, I, I read, I was, I was telling a, a, a brother that I read through um, uh, the book of Acts so many times. And the other day, one, within one week, I read through the book almost three, four times. Because I, each time I read it, I came upon something that I never saw before. And I've been reading through for years, years, years. But yet, that's, that's scripture. That's the way it is. Spend time with God. Look at the quality time that is given you now to be home. Look at the time that is given you. to step away from all that is going on around you and just to spend time with him in the word all right um anybody has a question or something then we move right on at once yes i have a question go ahead go ahead my sister i can hear you go ahead um, so i am reading deuteronomy mm -hmm. and we have been talking a lot about the word mm -hmm. So I see in Deuteronomy chapter 30, mm -hmm. reading um, verse um, 11 through 15, mm -hmm. um, I see here where God was actually speaking about Jesus, the word, if I am correct, mm -hmm. when he told the Israelites, that his commandment is not in the heavens, mm -hmm. lest they should say, um, why shall, shall I go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and to do it? Mm -hmm. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou should say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and mm -hmm. do it? But God said, but the word is very nigh unto thee. Mm -hmm. Come in. Mm -hmm. That mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just wondering here, you know, if God was talking about Jesus Christ at this point, where in verse 15 he said, See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Mm -hmm. So is salvation, is, is it the, the gospel preached for two reasons? Mm -hmm. For salvation, mm -hmm. for those who accept the word, mm -hmm. and for damnation to those who do not accept it based upon verse 15 am i right here well well th not th this gospel would be the the glorious gospel not the gospel of the grace of god in relation to initial salvation because god is dealing with his people so if we were to place a gospel here this would have been the glorious gospel relevant to soul salvation because that's what he was pointing towards israel as a nation that they would need to secure um, their soul salvation in this context. And the word was nigh, the word was right there. God in, 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 in prophetic order, through his leadership, through Moses and others, gave them the word immediately, prophetically, and then in the future, Jesus would come and bring about the fulfillment of that which was spoken about. So Israel as a nation had direct contact right here. And, and God gave them truth right around Sister Mo. So the gospel being preached here is, is the gospel, if we were to put a gospel here, would be the gospel of the grace of God. The same gospel to which we are committed to as believers. The same gospel that the Apostle Paul preached more than any other gospel in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 16, Peter mentioned that Paul 
preach in all, well, Paul in all his epistle wrote about these things. What things? Things that are relevant to the believer's walk. Things that are relevant to the believer becoming an overcomer and then obtain um, his, in, his or her in, uh, inheritance, so to speak. Um, Pastor, wouldn't it be then that God is saying to them, listen, you are such a fortunate set of people that the word is right here. It's not far from you. Because in the future, the word will be far. The, 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 the word would have to be taken by faith. They didn't have to take the word by faith. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? They have it right there with them, among them. Which but no, they, they still, faith comes into their walk, you know, whether it, it, still, it will still be faith because they had to believe. And yeah. remember, remember, Brother Noel, one of the greatest problems with Israel was unbelief, you know. Yes. There were, there were unbelievers or unbelieving people. Um, most of their walk in the wilderness. And even though the word, think about it for one moment. Jesus was with them, the disciples in particular. And yet, they, they had doubt as to whether Jesus would come back. Jesus mentioned it to them. All these things were written in scripture. So after Jesus died and was crucified, you remember that they gathered into the upper room? Yeah. And they were there and they were praying. And most likely, they probably never believed. Thomas never believed anything much about Jesus. When he was told that Jesus came to Mary, he said, unless I see Christ, I'm not going to believe. So unbelief is always there. Now, let's put that, let's bring that in perspective to, to, to us as believers. How many of us today are believing believers? How many of us? And when, and when I ask the question, how many of us are believing believers? Here's what I'm asking. How many of us are following scripture, taking Christ's word as it is, and not man's tradition? Most Christians today, they would go with man's tradition than with scripture. Because they, to them, there is some truth in man's tradition. And Jesus made it very clear to them. You don't go with man's tradition. It's fake. It doesn't last. I mean, let, we're not, I don't want anybody to think I'm criticizing anything. Please don't. This is just an observation. As my wife just mentioned, look at all the programs and the different stuff that churches create. And, 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 and they might have had their place. Listen, what do they do now? Even, even as we, we are on Zoom and we're doing, did you know that they try to probably try to have some type of stuff similar to those things, Zooming or whether streaming. People are just set in their ways rather than spending time to come into an understanding of scripture. They are just giving people what people want. Jesus never gave the disciples what they wanted, you know. He never did. Look at the two men that he met on the Emmaus Road. He could allow them to feel good within themselves. But the Bible said they, the, the men themselves, not Jesus, but the men confessed that when Jesus spoke to them, their heart burned within truth. Truth going up against ignorance. Truth going up against lack of knowledge, disobedience. They should have studied and knew about Moses if they did and read Moses. And we're not talking about Moses as a person. We're talking about Moses as the books of Moses, the first five books they would have understood Jesus. And by the way, it is the very same thing that I kept mentioning in, in John chapter 12 and verse 48. John 12, I'm going to go there. John 12 and verse 48. Let's go right there. It's my favorite verse. John 12. Bear with me. I'm going to get there. John 12. And then verse 48. Look at verse 48 with me. What it says here. I've always read this verse. He said, John 12 and verse, where's verse 40? Just bear with me. One moment, I'll get there. It's an awesome verse. He said, all right, listen, listen, to, listen to this verse. Same thing, same thing. Look at Je and Jesus, is Jesus speaking here? It is his words. He brought the men back. I want you to follow me. Don't, 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 lose, don't lose track. He brought them back the Old Testament, what was it that he brought them back to? The writings, the word, Moses, the prophets, 
a psalm, the entire books of the Old Testament, he brought them back. The foundation was laid. And look what he says here. He said, he that rejected me, talking to us, rejected me, he that rejected me and received not my words. Mm -hmm. Have one that judgeth him. And which one is it? The word that have that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So if churches are running away from the word, if we're not spending time, let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters, you and I better wake up. We better wake up. Because no matter what we do, Jesus said, if you reject the words that I speak, and what word did Jesus speak to us? We have it, the written word. He said, if you reject that word, the same word is going to be, become your judge, is going to parallel your life to scripture. And that's why in Matthew 7, verse 21, when he said, many will walk up to me that day and said, Lord, I prophesied. Oh, I healed the sick. I raised the dead. I fed people. Jesus will simply say, did you do my father's will? What is my father's will? The spoken word. What is written for us? Do. Pastor. Go ahead, Brother Keith. Yes. Um, isn't that the same way um, in Revelation? Um, a book was opened, then another book. Mm -hmm. isn't, that, isn't the same word that is going to be used to judge to judge believers, both believers and unbelievers? Um, the open book in Revelation, you mean the broken seal? No, no. He said a book was open, mm -hmm. then another book. I don't I, remember. No. Um, they, there are two books in Revelation, chapter 20. Verse 14, but, but a key, there are two books. One is going to be the book of life and one is going to be the Lamb's book of life. Now, remember that these books are, are very, very important. They are distinct in, in certain ways, right? The Lamb's book of life, the Lamb's book of life is completely different from the book of life. Right. The Lamb's book of life contain the name of all those who are eternally redeemed. Mm -hmm. While the book of life has also those names, but has something else. It has the works of the believers. So the reason why those two books are brought there is because one, one name has to be found in that book, not to be cast into the lake of fire. And the other book also will have the works of remember all judgment of the future will be based on works so even at the wife on judgment whatever judgment is brought they will be based on, on righteous works so those two books are there so and and in revelation chapter um i think it's chapter 13 i don't i i can't see my my bible right now because of my eye um but uh that's the distinction between those two books yeah, but the question I'm asking really, I understand what you're saying, but what will man be judged from? Is it from the same word that we are reading that? Yes, yes, yes. From the very word that we're reading, from the word that God has given to us in terms of the scriptures in Revelation. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. We're almost done. Anyone else? Rather than getting back into the material, we'll finish it next week. This is awesome. Anyone else? Dr. Clark? Yes. Yes. Just want to uh, just jump back a little bit. I, I, I think um, Sister Amor mentioned, asked a question initially, uh, the onset of the, of the studies. And, um, you know, I, I, I think we missed just something in the midst of her question. Um, the question was, and if she can correct me, um, she pretty much asked a question said that that the living the living word had to explain the written word and and she made a comment and she said that 
is that a fulfillment of scripture? And she, she mentioned that, and if, if, if I'm correct, and I believe 100%, and why? is because even in that passage in verse 32, um, the essence of that passage is the burning desire, the burning that they, fit, that they felt, which happened when Christ explained the scripture. And when she went back to Deuteronomy now, and she, um, she made that comment in, Deut in Deuteronomy, what happened is that the world will be far from them, and it's because of their rejection. And when you reject the word that, that Israel did, the Jews did, they reject the word. So the rejection of the word, you know, that allows them to be far from the word. So I believe that, that absolutely, that it is a fulfillment in Scripture, which it, it requires the living word to explain the written. Right. And the written then was what the prophets, what the prophets and, 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 and that's all they had because everything that came after that Old Testament, it was Jesus Christ was actually living, living those words and he had to explain. So while they were, because they were far away from the word, right, which is the, um, the, 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 the disciples, you know, we all know that a lot of them didn't believe so the Jews were pretty much far away from it just because they rejected. So Christ coming now to explain the word, then that um, caused that burning desire, according to verse 32 in that, that very passage. Explain. Um, explain. I, 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 I am lost there, Pastor Anthony, for a moment. Um, for two reasons. Um, one, the... the, the um, and I'm looking contextually at certain things here the the what time is it? oh the um john chapter one as we mentioned from from deuteronomy i'm just going back a little bit that in john chapter one we saw jesus as as mentioned because in deuteronomy that was read they had the prophets there they had the word they had moses who basically um was the one who was in direct contact with them in terms of scripture and pointing towards the future now jesus christ now in john chapter one become the 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 living word um that actually walked among man the bible said in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the same word became flesh and dwelt among men and so on the emmaus road when the, the, the these disciples and we're not talking about the entire Jewish group now. We're just talking about these two, the context of which we, we discussed. That they never understood. And as you, as you just mentioned, most of them, not all of them, most of them probably did not. They probably understood certain things, but just never believed it. Because most of them had knowledge as to who Jesus was. They knew who Jesus was, you know, but they just did not believe. But the, 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 the fact of these men eyes being not open is because they were spiritually blind to the understanding of the Old Testament. And here's the key. If one misses the foundation laid with the Old Testament, then you will miss everything else. And I think that's simple what Jesus was trying to point out to them. Right. So, 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 so that Deuteronomy passage, um, Dr. Clark, that she... Um, that she was talking about, it is pretty much making 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 pretty much the same reference. If we if, if we if we look back at it, so the point I want to make is that what happened there, it was a fulfillment of scripture, because the Jews reject rejected, and that's the reason why why the scripture was far far away from them. Which as she, as she mentioned that here was it that 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 it was pretty much talking that listen Christ would come and he would be the living word but it would be far away from them. And just because they would have rejected, they didn't know then, but they would have rejected the word. So this is pretty much, pretty much an example of a fulfillment of scripture. And that, that is caused by rejection. They rejecting the word. That's the reason why. And then it takes the living word, which is Jesus Christ. Because even today, we um, 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 interpretation comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit functionizes you? you and then that's when that th that's how today even today um we we have knowledge of the word um 
Mm -hmm. Remember that the men on Emmaus Road, there's no indication that they rejected the word, you know. They did not. It's just that they probably never understood from, from back then the foundational aspect of who Jesus is. As we, there's no indication that they deliberately rejected it. Is that just like today, um, there are lots of people who are going to church today and are, and are very faithful and are just, they are just paying attention to what they are being told. But they do not understand. And it's not that they are not rejecting, but they are just not given truth. They are not given appropriate in, information. But in Deuteronomy, though, we, want to be, we, want to, we just want to make sure contextually that we have it correctly. Because uh, when, we, when, when, we, when we tie scriptures to scripture, there must be a, a, a flow of thought. The same trend of thought must flow in those scriptures. So we, from, from Deuteronomy, there must be a connection contextually between Deuteronomy, um, Luke, and um, if we tie these passages together, we just want to make sure. And I think that's, that's the emphasis there. Um, the, the, um, the men on the Emmaus Road were just lacking in knowledge in terms of not understanding the Old Testament. And that's the emphasis that Jesus was trying to point out. In other words, if, if, if we, there's one other passage that we can, we can glean from. And that is 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. And it's the same thing. Um, Satan wants to do the same thing that he did with those men and did with Israel in general. He wants to blind our eyes. At spiritual eyes, or in other words, what he wants to he wants to to cloud our understanding so that we do not come into an understanding of truth, and that's basically what happened to these men. They just never came into that understanding. Nicodemus was the same thing. Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jew, but yet he came to Jesus by night because he wanted an explanation as to as to from this man as to how to enter into the kingdom or how to become a believer. As Jesus began explaining it to him, he began asking more questions and Jesus realized where he was. And Jesus said, just like the two men at Emmaus, oh, is it the rule of the Jew, my brother? You don't understand what I'm talking about. You were born first. And now it's going to be a second time. All right, our time is up. We are going to, we're going to take the song and we're going to, we're going to uh, dismiss. All right, let me, let, me, let me just breathe a word of prayer before you, uh, before you do. Let's pray. Our Father, we just want to thank you for tonight. What an awesome time we had as we discuss scripture, as we look at the word of God, as we spend time together. We pray your blessings upon our time. You are an awesome God. We pray for our people in general. We pray that you will bless them. You'll be with them. You'll walk with them and you'll talk with them. Almighty God, pray for my cousin, that is lying in a hospital, the mighty God, that is, that is experiencing some difficulties. I pray, almighty God, that you'll be with him, that you'll strengthen him and be with his wife, um, almighty God. I pray for Spencer's sister that just had a brain aneurysm. I lift her up before you tonight. I do not know the state that she's in in terms of her condition. But I pray, Almighty God, for a special touch upon her body in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, there's so many things going on. Those who are impacted by this coronavirus, we pray for them and we pray for healing in their body. Thank you for tonight and thank you for your people. Thank you for your faithful people. Pray for those of us here at Valley Stream. We ask that you bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. We pray that your will be done. Remember our, 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 our entire church community. We pray that you will lead us and direct our path. Lord, we are so grateful for who you are in our lives and for what you've done for us and for the path that you've led us. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blessings on everyone until Sunday morning.